So today, I wanted to answer a question that I get a lot, and that question is, can I handle my green tree python? And honestly, that's a great question, and the answer is kind of yes and no. So as you guys have probably seen as neonates or as young hatchlings, these are either yellow or red. And for the most part, when you see a yellow or red hatchling, that means that it's within, you know, probably a year and a half or so of age. It seems to be at that point where they start transitioning over to their adult coloration. Obviously, different locales in the different northern and southern species can be a little bit different as far as some change overnight. This one changed all in about three days or so, and there's some animals that take months to change over coloration. Why I wanted to mention that is that when they're yellow and red, for when you first get them, you may not know the exact age, but as a general rule, I waited about a year to handle mine. I know a lot of people wait about six months or so, but the fact is that you want to wait for a decent amount of time because when they first come out, their tails are actually very, very fragile. So you don't really want to handle them because you may mess up the vertebrae in their tail. That's also why you can't sex them. So that's why when you buy a neonate, they won't be sexed. If they are sexed, you want to trust that person on either um, if they sexed it correctly or if they're just lying to you or maybe they even damaged the snake. Now let's explain a little bit about what green tree pythons are thought to be as far as their attitudes go. So green tree pythons are notoriously, I guess you could say defensive. For any animal, just because one's defensive or is aggressive doesn't mean there's others that won't be and vice versa. But green tree pythons have long been known to be defensive probably because um, that's stemming from a lot of wild caught animals, animals that have gone through tremendous stress in the importation process as well as animals from certain localities. So uh, the locality Biak is often known to be more defensive than other localities. Plus Biaks are the most farm bred, the most commonly imported. So what is a farm bred green tree python? Well, that's a green tree python that was bred in Indonesia, but there's no one making sure that those are definitely captive bred. They're animals that have been imported from Indonesia, whether they're wild caught, whether they're farm bred, whether they're captive hatched. We don't really know for sure. We don't know what their diet was in the wild, but they seem to come over and have a little bit more trouble adjusting, even though they are great animals to have and um, in capable hands, they are absolutely perfect animals. But if you're really looking for an animal that's gonna do great, I would always go with US captive born and bred. So that means a breeder here in the US bred them. And no, that doesn't mean captive bred. If you see CB, next to a green tree python, that's going to be an imported animal. You wanna see US CBB, so that means United States captive born and bred from, I mean, there's only a handful of breeders in the United States. If you wanna know a great breeder, I'd be glad to point them out to you, but for the most part, when you get US captive born and bred, these animals are very handleable. And as you can see, this one is just hang it out on me. She does, if you go in there at night, she does often come out like your food and she'll mistake you for food. They are, as you can imagine, being an animal in a tree that catches things like birds, they are very alert and especially in their hunting hours which are at night. Even your most docile green tree python, I don't know if you wanna go around and stick your hand in there in the middle of the night because they may just mistake you for food. So that's one thing to consider. Luckily, their bites aren't the worst. I mean, it's not like a, um, they do have a little bit smaller teeth than say an emerald tree boa, which has very, very large teeth. But green tree pythons have gotten a bad rap over the years and that's mostly due to uh, things like importation. Now, as far as how often do I handle this snake? I don't handle a lot of my snakes very often. And uh, my green tree python, I certainly only handle maybe once a month or when I'm showing them off to people. Cause generally I'll just keep them on the perch just because he'll be a little bit more comfortable that way. And kind of all they want to do when you do handle them is wrap up and get secure. So it's easy for me just to leave him on the perch where he feels the most secure. They are generally very, they can be a little squirrely when you take them out. You just want to make sure that 
you have all your hands on them, give them the ability to wrap around on stuff and um, they're usually pretty fine. As you've seen this whole video, he's just been hanging out and now I have no problem allowing this animal to get close to my face or anything like that. Obviously it wants to go towards the heat that's coming from my mouth. But it is important to realize that when you first go into the enclosure, like I said, even if it's not at night, you want to make sure you don't just start putting your hands and stuff in their face. Just take their perch out. That's really a great thing about having um, removable perches so that you don't have to unwrap them from the perch, which can be really hard and they certainly don't want to come unwrap from the perch once they're on there. So a removable perch will allow me just to take it out. What I'll do is once I get him off of here, or once I get this out of the cage, I will just gently unwrap him from his perch and then he'll usually wrap just right on my arm straight from the perch. And then when I go to put him back, I'll probably put the perch back in and then allow him to crawl on the perch and then he'll wrap right back up. I mean, it's fairly simple as far as um, there's a lot of real squirrely animals, squirrely snakes you can get out there, but I mean, once they get secure, these guys are totally cool. That being said, these aren't animals that you want to get just so that you can hold them. I mean, it's a great display animal, so get them as a display animal, and you really got to do a lot of research on how to keep these guys. Once you get it down, it's pretty simple, and it's pretty mindless, honestly. They don't move around a lot. They don't need terribly hard requirements. All you have to do, really, is give them fresh water, an adequate enclosure, with a hot spot that's not too hot. I mean, people generally want to go 88 degrees or something like other pythons that they have are 88 to 92 degrees. That's way too hot for a green tree python. They would much rather be around 85 degrees. So, you know, 85 degree hotspot, a decent ambient humidity, and um, fresh water every three to four days. So twice a week, just change their water bowl, fresh water. They seem to like cool, cold water. Um, that was always a problem back in the day was getting green tree pythons to drink That's why they were often considered hard to keep because they were getting very dehydrated and getting sick It's important to give them adequate water and that doesn't just mean have a water bowl full It means fresh water because in the wild They're probably used to it raining every couple days or there's a rainy season where it rains all the time And they're getting that fresh water and for whatever reason they don't like to drink stagnant water so humidity is an issue just like all snakes in comparison especially pythons but it's really that fresh drinking water which is just as if not more important i mean these guys aren't your best pet snake but they can be if you keep them correctly and you want just a snake that you can look at all the time hold occasionally and you got to be aware that you're going to feed a little bit less less often than you're used to so um, a green tree python, an adult, doesn't have to eat anything over an adult mouse. That's usually pretty good for most green tree pythons. You definitely want to stick to increments of two to three weeks every feeding instead of, say, a ball python. It's every single week you're getting a mouse, or a rat, rather. Over the years, people have found that they have better success with mice than rats because rats seem to have a little thicker fur and skin that makes it actually harder for them to digest. So we've seen things like prolapse, which is the result of the green tree python not being able to fully digest their meal. So unfortunately when they go to the bathroom, their intestines come out with that and you know, you'll get urinary bladder and stuff that comes out like that, which actually happened to this guy, but luckily we got him stitched up. Why did that happen to him? Because I fed a little too much, a little too often, which is something really to avoid. And he was also feeding on rat crawlers. So a rat was involved. So now we only do mice and we make sure that it's two to three weeks. And so far it's been great. This guy has had zero problems and everyone else I know who does that has had zero problems. Um, my information about green tree pythons doesn't come really from my personal experience in keeping them because I only have one. It comes from talking to people who have 
much more experience than I have. And then I wanna pass it on to you guys because things like YouTube, you don't get a lot of videos of things like green tree pythons. So you'll find on YouTube that it's mostly reserved for more common species or when you see a green tree python, it's just being shown off. People don't really explain all the little intricacies of them. People kind of just perpetuate all the fears and misconceptions of them. And you never see someone just holding them regularly like this. This, which is what I mean 90% of the green trees that I've seen that are US captive born and bred are this calm and this cool to hold and just amazing snakes that unfortunately we haven't had the ability to expose everyone to so it's gonna take education whether it be podcasts or videos to kind of break the mold on these guys and really show off how amazing they are because their misconceptions are just that, they're misconceptions. And over time we've seen the quality of animals that come in, the quality of animals that we produce, and the overall um, better husbandry practices which make awesome animals like this possible. You know, if I'm not providing the right conditions for this animal, of course it's gonna be hard to keep. People say that they're hard to keep. Well, yeah, it's because it's too hot and you're not providing adequate water. They're not hard to keep. They're just very specific in their needs. Now you may ask yourself, where can I get something like a green tree python? Well, unfortunately green tree pythons aren't sold at a lot of shows or anything like that, which is good and bad. If you see a green tree python at a show, a lot of times that will, those will be imported babies. There's not many green tree python breeders that vend shows. Make sure if you see a green tree python, ask where it came from, ask who bred it. If they said it's captive bred and that's all they give you, that probably means that it's not US captain born bred. If they don't say that they bred it, it is probably an imported animal. And um, I'm not saying that you can't buy imports. I'm just saying that you have a much better chance of getting an animal that's cool like this if it's US captive born and bred. So some cool people to look out for. Um, you know, people we've had on the podcast before, you know, Bill Stiegel of Phoenix Reptiles. He's a great green tree python breeder. And Ian Bessel, who we're actually gonna have the podcast on next week, is a great green tree python breeder. Buddy Buscemi. There's a few other people. If you need to get in contact with, uh, feel free to ask me green tree python questions. I'll do the best I can do. And if you're looking for an animal, I'd be glad to refer you to one of those guys to get an awesome US captive born and bred green tree python. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this changes your view as far as handling your green tree python. Handling not something that they need, but if you have to handle them, a lot of them you can. And then also if you enjoy handling your snake once a week or something, you know, that's really up to you. The snake that's commonly misunderstood. Hope you enjoyed this. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if you made it this far, you're on the team.